Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is usually about luxury on a budget. This video is really different. It does have to do with luxury, but it has to do with a lot of other things too. First I want to say, pardon if there's any glare on the glasses. I'm reading my notes on this because I have a lot to say and uh, I'll try to keep my head down. I think there's a little less glare when I tilt my head down like this, but I can't guarantee that. This video is in response to two videos by two other YouTubers. The first is a video called Is Gucci Cancelled by KW Shops. She posted that video maybe a week ago from when I'm filming this and I'm mostly responding to her video, but I'm also responding to a video back from November. This is February of 2019 and that video was by Chris Christina Brawley called Why Are We Always So Offended? I wanted to do a response video to Christina's video back in November, but I never got around to it with all the holiday stuff. And then when I saw KW Shop's video, it brought up some of the same issues, so I thought this would be a good time to just go ahead and address both of them. KW Shop's video was a very thoughtful response to Gucci's sweater that recently came out that has, people have said it looks like blackface. And there's controversy surrounding that. And there was some controversy in the comments on her video. And that's a big reason that I decided to do this video. And I will link both of those videos in the description box below so you can check those out. And please do check them out. Before I get started, I wanna do a couple of little disclaimers because we're talking about race here. I'm a white chick, as you can probably tell, and it can be tricky for white people to talk about race. It can be something that a lot of us avoid because we're afraid of saying the wrong thing or offending someone or getting in trouble. I am not someone who has ever experienced discrimination based on my skin color, but I do have some education about racial issues from my graduate school education in social psychology, and I have because of that, a lot more awareness of those issues than I used to have. I also want to say, I know African American is the term that a lot of people use in America to refer to black people. I'm going to say black people in this video because I'm not just talking about America and of course not all black people are African American. So I just want to get that out of the way in case anybody's questioning why I'm using that term. I also want to say I'm very aware that a lot of white people appropriate things from black culture and I'm aware of that being a bad thing. I don't want to take KW Shop's video. She's a black woman. I don't want to, as a white woman, take her video and like appropriate it kind of for content on my channel. The reason that I'm doing this video, the reason I feel comfortable doing it is to respond to some of the things that she said, but mostly to respond to some of the people in the comment section that I really had a problem with. And also I saw some people in her comment section and in my comment section on a response I did to Jill Maurer's video, I'll link that one below too, where some people who self-identified as black women told me in my video and said in KW Shop's video that they wished more white people would talk about racism in a positive way. Because of course racism is not a black issue, it is an all of us issue. Okay, I think that's all the disclaimers. <laughs> So let's get back to the Gucci sweater. When I first saw the Gucci sweater, it was in an article, I think, related to the controversy around the black face issue. So one of my first questions was, as a human being, or specifically as a white person, would I see that sweater and think blackface? And I can't really say with that one because I saw it in the context of a blackface conversation, so I already had it on my mind when I was seeing that sweater. I think I probably would have interpreted it that way though because blackface has been in the news so much in the last few months at least. I do watch some of the Real Housewives shows and I remember seeing Luann wear blackface for a party, I think it was a Halloween party, on the Real Housewives of New York and then Megyn Kelly talked about it on her show and said some things that were controversial and got fired for it. And most recently a photo surfaced in a yearbook from the Virginia governor and where he I don't know exactly because we don't have all the facts about it yet, but there's a picture with somebody in a KKK outfit and somebody wearing blackface and supposedly the governor's one of those people. And then the attorney general came out and said that he has worn blackface too. So it's been in the news a lot. And then the photo that Gucci put out of the sweater 
is being worn on a white model, which makes it look even more like blackface. So it's already been in my consciousness, and I think if I'd seen that sweater out of the context of the blackface conversation, I probably still would have interpreted it that way. As I was doing a little bit of research in preparation for this video, I came across a more recent article about some shoes that Katy Perry put out that were also accused of blackface. And both of these items have been taken off the market at this point, and the companies have apologized. KW Shops goes into more detail about that, so be sure to watch that. And then in my research, I also found an item that Prada came out with a few months ago. With They do funny little keychains, and these were monkeys, but they look very much like blackface. And then Montclair, uh, which makes very expensive poofy jackets, they have a jacket with a little emblem on the front that they said is supposed to be a penguin, but it looks absolutely nothing like a penguin. I've worked with penguins before. I know what they look like. This looked like blackface. The companies who have released these items have claimed that they didn't realize the items look like blackface and that they don't want to offend anyone. KW Shops points out a very important point that there should have been someone in the process that pointed this out to them because it's pretty obvious to a lot of us. I've worked in design companies. I know how many people's eyes are on a product from start to end and it is astonishing that no one said anything or at the very least that if something was said nothing was done about it. They released the items anyway. I like to try to give people the benefit of the doubt. I'm thinking, you know, Prada, Gucci, not Katy Perry though, Montclair, those are all non-American companies. So maybe there was some kind of cultural difference there where they didn't realize it and they didn't have anybody in the company that saw the black face in the items because of cultural differences. I don't know. I feel like that's not just an American issue. So those of you who are in other countries, can you let us know in the comments section if blackface is something that you're aware of in your country? If you understand the connotations of it and what a negative thing it is. KW Shops also points out maybe these companies just need a more diverse body of people who are decision makers. Maybe no one pointed out that these look like blackface because people weren't aware of it because they weren't diverse enough. She also points out that Gucci previously had released some very similar sweaters that were in different colors like blues or whites and Katy Perry's shoes were the same. They had been released in other colors too. And there was no controversy over the other colors. I've seen people in the comment sections of her video and of articles about these items saying, well, they were released in other colors and nobody cared about that. Why is it just about the black ones? People are making an issue out of nothing. They're turning this into a race issue when it isn't. Some people have actually said it's a made up problem, but this dismisses the valid feelings and experiences of people whose experiences are different from them. Case in point, as a white person, I never knew the painful history of blackface until I was an adult. I remember seeing it in cartoons and old movies when I was a kid, but I never thought anything of it because it didn't affect me. If you look at KW Shop's video and scroll down below her description box, you'll see that she pinned a comment and she tells the story of the first time that she encountered blackface. It was as a child on Halloween. And this illustrates one of the differences between us that's solely based on race, that I never had to worry about blackface. She did, she encountered it as a kid and it helped shape who she was. This one difference between us illustrates white privilege. And I hope I hope that some white adult who answered the door for the child in blackface that she encountered took it upon themselves to talk to that child's parents and call them out on it. I want to show you something. I'm hesitant to show this for reasons you'll understand when you see it, but I want to show it to you anyway and let's talk about it for a minute. So I have this and I want to tell you why I have it. That item was part of my childhood. It was attached to a kitchen cabinet in my grandparents' kitchen, uh, a lower cabinet, like where the drawers are. It was in a little corner there. It's a towel holder, so it would be screwed in here and then you'd put a towel in its mouth. When I was a kid, I thought that that was a clown or a monkey. I did not know what it really was. I always thought it was kind of frightening. It wasn't until I was an adult that I realized what it was. I walked into the kitchen one day, and this must have been after college because I feel like I had been gone a while, so I hadn't seen it in a while. And I walked into the kitchen and saw it and realized what it was and was taken aback and kind of shocked. 
And I never asked about it though. I don't know why. I think um, my grandparents, I don't, you know, this is one of the things with being white. You have relatives and people you know who make racist comments, but you don't think of them as racist, right? My grandparents were good people. They're both gone now. They definitely made comments every now and then. It was not a constant thing. I didn't think of it as part of their identity, but it was comments here and there that disparage people of different races. I wish now that I had asked about this. I just never even thought to. I have no idea where they got it, why they had it. I don't know. Maybe I should ask my mom about that, but she probably doesn't know either. Why do I have it now? After they died, we took we were allowed to take whatever we wanted from the house. I took three things. I took um, a photo and a painting of my grandparents. I took, well, three groups of things. I took um, some Spode Christmas tree china that was my grandmother's. My sister and I collect that. And then I took this. And I'm not entirely sure why I wanted it. And I, I, by the way, I do not have this displayed in my home or anything. It's in a drawer. I forgot I even had it until I started thinking about this video. But I guess I took it partly because it's such a strange memory from childhood. And part of it too is it's like, um, I remember seeing, and I was trying to find this the other day and I couldn't find information on it. I remember seeing someone, I swear it was Spike Lee, but I can't find any information on this, who has a collection of blackface items. This reminds me of that too, that it's like a, um, a reminder, not in a good way of course, of something that I was gonna say was part of our past, but clearly it's not just in the past. I'm not sure what to do with this. For now, it'll just stay in my drawer. I don't know if there's a place like a museum or something that I could donate it where it could be used as some kind of educational tool in some sense. I don't know. I'm not sure what to do with it yet. But it's an odd little piece that relates to what we're talking about. So that's why I showed you. Another example of seeing things from different perspectives is the Confederate flag. As a white Southerner, that flag growing up never meant racism to me. That flag represented the Old South, which was not necessarily about slavery. As a white person, I have the privilege of being able to separate those things. Many of my ancestors were Southern white farmers. As far as I know, none of them were slave owners. They were too poor to be slave owners. That's one way I can separate it, that there's more to the Old South than just slavery. And I'm not, certainly not dismissing slavery or making it less important. But for white people, we can separate it. Whereas black people in the Old South didn't have a choice. Slavery was their entire life because it was forced on them. White people had more choices. So I think those two perspectives of the Old South make more sense when you think of it in those terms. For me, in more present day, when I see that Confederate flag, it's usually as a sticker on the back of somebody's pickup truck. And when I see it, I think redneck. It's a generalization, but it's one I feel pretty confident in making based on my own experiences. And I'm not putting rednecks down. I am related to a lot of them. They are my people. And I also just wanna say that being a redneck does not mean you are a racist necessarily. There is definitely some overlap there, but certainly not always. I don't want to generalize any groups. I did not connect the Confederate flag to racism and slavery until I was an adult, again white privilege. I remember there being a story on the local news about we have this big rodeo in Houston and there's a barbecue cook-off and there was a confederate flag at one of the booths at the barbecue cook-off and there was a controversy around that and how it was a racist symbol and that's when I learned about that connection. In these last few years with all the controversy, the, the newer controversy around the confederate flag and the confederate statues, I see the flag less and less. I don't see it on people's pickup trucks so much anymore. Where I do see it, or where I remember it seeing the most, is when we're on road trips, we're driving through a really small town, somebody might have one hung on their house or on their fence. And now when I see it, I still think redneck, but I also find it more disturbing, and that's partly because of the political connotations that it has now, or at least 
that those are new to me. That said, I'm aware that it means different things to different people because it's meant different things to me. So I am cautious not to jump to judgment based on my own beliefs. That brings me back to people saying that blackface on these fashion items is a made up issue. I've seen comments telling people, you're too sensitive, you're triggered, the more recent term. You're so easily offended. You need to develop thicker skin. Some of that is just ignorance or stubbornness or just a simple unwillingness to see things from any other perspective besides their own. But I also want to point out that these statements can also be an abuser's way of saying, I should be allowed to disparage you, put you down, make you feel inferior without consequence. You're not allowed to talk back to me, and if you do, I'm going to call you sensitive, triggered, easily offended, a snowflake. What this does is these abusive people are trying to put blame. I don't like the word victim, but I'm going to use it here. They're trying to put blame on the victim and dismissing the validity of their experience in an effort to divert attention away from the wrong that they are doing as the abuser. I've seen a lot of this in politics these days, these last few years, and we've had a push for the last few decades toward political correctness, which is trying not to offend anyone. And there's been this big backlash against it. To me, political correctness does not mean not trying to offend someone who's too sensitive. To me, it means being respectful of all people. Whether or not we can relate to various things about them, whether or not we agree with them. To me, it means getting rid of the terminology and the imagery that puts people down or reminds them that at least part of society thinks they are inferior. It does not mean tolerating people because to me that means that you see something wrong with them. What it does mean is accepting other people, no matter their differences. I feel like this is obvious, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Just because someone looks different than us, loves different from us, worships different from us, lives different from us, self-identifies different from us, eats different from us, or interprets a flag or a sweater different from us, it does not mean their perspectives and experiences are not just as valid as our own. The term political correctness has come to have negative connotations. I wish we could just replace it with the word respect. Because for me, the question has never been, why are we so easily offended? The real question is why would we want to be disrespectful and make other people feel inferior to us? 